Well, today the U.S. Supreme Court going to hear arguments on two key cases involving affirmative action. Justices going to weigh whether universities can consider race in their admission decisions. The hearing focuses on policies at Harvard and the University of North Carolina, and many observers anticipate a ruling that could overturn 50 years of precedence. We talked to two Colorado women with differing views on the matter before the high court. If someone had not seen us, if they had not wondered about our skills, if they didn't understand our life experiences, we probably be, would be looked over. Educator and diversity consultant Darlene Sampson credits affirmative action for her success and that of generations of men and women like her. She says that while universities have made great strides to value diversity, the work to undo what she calls metastasized inequities in our country is only just beginning. Nine states have already abolished affirmative action and they are barely uh, making the grade for diversity in the university. So without very intentional ways of looking at diversity, uh, we will turn the clock backwards. Priscilla Shaw, also an educator, opposes race-based college admissions. I grew up in a culture where you have to work hard, you study hard, you excel, and that is the equalizer in the world, is you just work hard and you get into programs based on your merit. The group Students for Fair Admissions alleges that race-based admissions results in discrimination against Asian students. You can't put your thumb on the scale and intentionally discriminate against one group in order to help another group. That is not the definition of equity. Samson hopes Justice Katanji Brown Jackson's questions and observations will open minds across the country, if not change the outcome of this case. We can't pretend that we're colorblind, because we're not. You see this brown face, we're not colorblind. Shaw looks forward to the court's decision. How do we create that diversity without using race or gender as a deciding factor? And so I'm not opposed to looking at different ways of creating a diverse pool. Lots of interest in today's hearing. A historic number of amicus or friends of the court briefs have been filed in advance.